Welcome to MegJC 101, a podcast about the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation and our contribution to building a resilient Jamaica. I'm your host, Dani Clark. Come, look at talk. Welcome back, MegJC 101 listeners. I'm Javon Gordon, standing in for our regular host, Dani Clark. In our last episode, we looked at the Legal Services Unit as our focus section under the Housing Portfolio. Dani had an insightful conversation with Ms. Patricia Ramsaran, the Assistant Attorney General in the Legal Services Unit, exploring various aspects such as processes, the array of services they provide, the overarching role, and so much more. If you missed the first part of this engaging two-part episode, be sure to catch up on our YouTube or Spotify pages at MEGJC underscore JM. In today's episode, we will get a closer look at the Legal Services Unit's legacy projects. Stay tuned. I am a beneficiary of a new social housing program. In 2020, I received a call at my house was on fire. We lost everything thanks to the new social housing program. I'm now the owner of a place I can probably call home. With over 160 homes delivered and counting, we are changing lives day by day. Apply for the new social housing program at your constituency office. The Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. Building hope. Building Jamaica. And we're back. Over to you, Dani, for part two with the Legal Services Unit. People, how many... I don't even know how to how to ask this question but i know that from whenever from however long the land has been here jamaica as we know it has been here we would have you know ownership and such and such the ministry have enough 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 titles not true and like from how long you think well remember you know we were once a colony of the british 1655 and to the extent that we have the records coming down the government has been, back in the day, the colonial government, to, the, to my understanding, titles were held in the name of the colonial secretary. And then when they did the legislation, then it became the Central Housing Authority. And that was the forerunner to the director of housing, which is which was the forerunner to what we now know as the minister of housing. So we have had schemes from as far back as the 40s and the 30s and unfortunately for whatever reasons back then and i can't offer you any guidance as to why titles were not prepared of that we just know them as legacy projects and we try to to sort them out mm -hmm. you know have three generations would have passed but nobody's willing to do the paperwork to bring the the ownership to present mm -hmm. so we have schemes in in say saint mary if i can recall that granny would have bought and they have passed on it has now become family land mm -hmm. and the persons who are on those lands don't want to do the paperwork to say grandpa and grandpa bought they had my father he has passed on i am that child of their child mm -hmm. and so we do the line to come down and then you do the la to come to the ministry to say okay we have paperwork to say granny and grandpa where are they they have died do you have the death certificate no can you go get it me can't bother with that me not bad me not gonna spend the money there we already are live on the land mm -hmm. we just are gonna go and live so you have you face that right so we do have titles come back from that time we have issues with with the legacy projects we have issues with people doing what is required by law mm -hmm. to bring them in a position where we can get the titles in their name and these are obstacles that we in the ministry can't cross because it is your family land and mm -hmm. while we're here to offer guidance we don't have the wherewithal to treat with that mm -hmm. but you want the title mm -hmm. but i have nothing on file to say you're to get it i have something on file to say grandfather and grandmother bought it mm -hmm. we've had issues with titles coming in remember i was saying to you earlier that the name issue mm -hmm. so we have schemes now coming closer into the 21st century the latter 20th 21st century 
people come in, they would have started out in their pet names. And we asked them to do the necessary paperwork to prove that they're one and same as who they're now seeing is on their identification. Then there's the issue now where you would have bought, two persons would have bought, they would have bought it as tenants in common, meaning that one person has a share, the other person has the other share. One person has passed. You don't, as a survivor, don't get that person's share, you know, because of the workings of the law. You don't wish to do the paperwork to be able to place the ministry in the position. Because guess what? A dead person can't sign the instrument of transfer, can they? And so there, there's a multiplicity of issues. Some of it is because of the, you know, the length of time that the ministry in the various iterations would have undergone mm -hmm. or the, the time it takes to fix a problem. Mm -hmm. But when we're now in the process of having titles after a lengthy period, we face these other issues. Mm -hmm. And all we're saying to our clients is, we will advise, because remember, we're not your lawyer. Right. We're not the lawyers of the clans. Mm -hmm. We're the minister's lawyers. Mm -hmm. But we are, re we are cognizant that we can give some general guidance, not advice, just general guidance. And we always say to our clans, you need to get the services of your own lawyer. If you can't afford to go to a private lawyer, then there are legal aid cl clinics all around. The churches carry some legal aid. Because at the end of the day, if you come and you tell me, say, you, and I transfer it to you and then it is proved that it wasn't you. Mm -hmm. Then trouble. we then there is trouble in mm -hmm. the camp. Mm -hmm. And to go get it back from you, no, that's another set of trouble. And so we do know we work closely with social services. Remember I was saying to you that we asked them to get yes, these primary the documents, documents from the get-go. Because get we, we realize when the files come to legal, the files are incomplete. So we have been talking with social service because even with tearing, you know, some, even these days people don't want to do tearing. I had a client in here yesterday, a client lives overseas. The client needs a tearing. The lady who came, our father don't have one. And that was the story. Well, Mr. Amsteron, it was quite, you know, I, I know you, we wanted to talk to you about sales and marketing, but you spoke about that already in terms of the, the role that you play in the sales and marketing relating to land. You spoke to us about social services and how it is that you collaborate with them and with the technical services unit. You also spoke to us about the legacy project and what is required for persons to come in and to benefit from those titles. So thank you so very much for speaking with us today. Any final words you want to leave with our listeners? Legal Services Division is open for business. We're here to assist. Don't look at us as we're on this side and you're on that side. Always remember, there are laws that govern our actions. If we're driving on the road, there are laws that govern the actions. Remember, there are documentation that you have to provide. We are mandated by law to do certain things to effect certain other things. So what I would say to our listeners is do what you need to do. I know there are cost factors, but having your title for your grandparents' land, having your title for your parents' land is a good feeling. But in order for us to transfer their land to you, we have to follow the law. If in doubt, come and speak. But remember, everything we do, there is a piece of legislation that guides our actions. And I would ask persons to just remember that. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here with us today on MegJC 101, Ms. Ramsaran. I'm sure our listeners will be having a wonderful time listening to this episode. An insightful conversation indeed. Now, let's go to our What's Happening segment. Welcome to What's Happening, straight out of the MegJC, where we stay up to the time and make you know what's going on in the ministry. From the latest updates to the freshest initiatives, we're there for get Uno the scoop. So make sure to take a seat, kick back, and get ready for hear all the things that we're going in this segment of What's Happening. The new social housing program, NSHP, which is designed to address the housing needs of the most destitute in society by offering safe, decent, and affordable housing, has achieved a significant milestone. A total of 165 housing units have been completed, positively impacting 620 indigent Jamaicans across 50 constituencies island-wide. 
Prime Minister Hollis recently announced increased budgetary allocations and measures to enhance the efficiency and speed of unit delivery, emphasizing the government's commitment to improving housing conditions for those in need. Tune in to the MegJC 360 to explore the latest initiatives from the MegJC. Stay informed and catch up on all the action by tuning in to the Ministry's YouTube page at MEGJC underscore JM. That's MEGJC underscore JM. In an exciting development under the MegJC's Urban Renewal and Development Program, three major parks are set for a $117.5 million upgrade. They are the Neva Antonio Park in Port Antonio, the Jack Myers Park in Black River, and the Rudolph Elder Park in Morant Bay. Some of the key upgrades include new gazebos, a new boundary wall, children's play area, solar lights, park furniture, restroom renovations, roof repairs, landscaping, and more. The park's transformation aligns with the government's goal to enhance the lives of urban dwellers by providing recreational spaces, thereby contributing to the residents' psychological, social, and physical well-being. To stay connected and updated about the latest happenings in the ministry, be sure to follow our social media pages on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at MEGJC underscore JM. That's MEGJC underscore JM. And that concludes today's segment of What's Happening. See you next time. This has been MegJC 101. We appreciate you joining us today and hope you've gained valuable insights into the ministry. If you have any questions after listening to this episode, leave a comment below or on our social media pages. We'll be sure to answer your questions in our next episode. Remember to follow, like, share, and subscribe on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at MegJC underscore JM. Goodbye for now. I'm Javon Gordon. Walk good.